So we're going to talk about sex during COVID, George. Welcome to Foreplay Radio, Couples and Sex Therapy. I'm Lori Watson, your sex therapist. And I'm George Fallon, your couples therapist. And we are passionate about talking about sex and helping you develop a way to talk to each other. Our mission is to help our audience develop a healthier relationship to sex that integrates the mind, the heart, and the body. Just as we begin, please remember to check out Uberlube. Uberlube.com is where you can get this great lubricant and help support Foreplay Radio. So you are hibernating, right, at Fort Fowler with your whole fam. Getting away for a little bit, just trying to change the four walls that I'm looking at. That's good. How's the weather right now? Pretty cold. Pretty cold. I can't believe it was actually snowing in April here. Snowing in April. And just why don't you tell everybody but what you dragged your boys into for that because it was so cold. Nothing to do but... A little polar bear plunge <laughs> in a cold lake in the snow. Sounds fun to me. <laughs> Got to mix it up, shake it up. <laughs> my men have to have what I call manhood challenges. We're going to get them. And my wife comes along too, so it's not just for the men, but it's... Uh, <laughs> She it's, got in the water, too? It's my too? way of... She did. Oh, you, you She's are. She's a trooper. Oh, my gosh. She really is. That's fantastic. Wow. Oh, well, I'm glad you guys are having some fun and together time. That sounds really cold. <laughs> it is cold, and I think that's what we're trying to talk about on this episode, that you have to be intentional because the stress is through the roof. You know, we're in crisis mode, and that's taking its toll, and... How do we remind ourselves that we're more than just the stress that's happening? That's right. I mean, people who I've been talking to, just girlfriends and stuff on the phone, I mean, they're talking about tremendous stress. Even though they're not really doing anything, I think it's just the anticipation of you know lost income. The, the threat of going to the grocery store becomes this this life-threatening mission. I got to get food and I could get sick. And it's really scary, Uh, let alone the people who are on the front lines and who are getting sick and people who have lost people. It's, It's terrible. But even for somebody who hasn't, very, very stressful time. I think one of the worst emotions is, is helplessness. We like to feel, even if it's a false sense of control, that we are the author of our own destiny mm-hmm. and you know, life is going the way we're hoping it's going to go. And something like this just turns that upside down. Mm-hmm. And we, there's no timetable. We don't know when things are going to start up again, what the world is going to look like. It, this sense of not knowing is just, it's pretty crippling for a lot of us. It is. I think you're right, the helplessness. I know I, I'm a worrier and... I worry about, you know, when is everything going to go back to normal? When is, you know, what's going to happen? It's, it's hard. It's a difficult time. I think anxiety and worry is, you said this recently to me, just how it's such a killer of sexual desire. When our mind is preoccupied, really hard to drag it away and come back to the present moment, which is where we need to be really sexually or for sex to be any good. Although I will say, sex in and of itself, it, it can be in reverse, right? It, it can pull us into the present moment. Mm-hmm. I mean, sometimes when, when we're anxious or stressed out or whatever, just having sex, it's, it can be a way to come back into now and it can regulate us, I, I think, when we're so discombobulated by what's going on in the world bring us into our partner, bring us back into our body. Those are good things. Absolutely. That's the paradox here. It's Sex is such a great way of regulating, making us feeling connected to actually reduce anxiety. But it's the last thing you want to do when you're incredibly anxious, right? Mm-hmm. So if you think about how we evolved as a species, if a uh, A tiger is about to run into a cave as a caveman. You really don't have time to say, yeah, let me finish and have an orgasm here, right? (laughs) Your body's mobilizing you to get the heck out. Yeah. So when there's high levels of anxiety, sex usually does decrease. 
Mm-hmm. And yet what you're saying is so important that sex is one of the best ways of regulating anxiety, of reducing it, of, of leading towards states of connection, which is the best way of handling stress. So that's that paradox that it's harder to do, and yet we need it even more. Mm-hmm. And, and I think people in close quarters are so irritable. It's mm-hmm. hard. We're, we're not getting enough me time not getting that regular space that we have when we both go away to work. The dogs are barking. The kids are rambunctious in the background. All of that kind of stuff is just, I think it's it's difficult. And so that irritability makes us irritable at our partner who is like, why would I want to have sex with you? You know, you're such a bear, such a grump. And then again, the, the sex is that release and we come together and we have more ability to not be as irritable. We have that more ability to forgive each other and it kind of lubricates everything, so to speak. Yeah. The logistics are important. The logistics are not in the favor of having great sex now. No. Everybody's locked in a house and you can, you know, they're in the next room. I'm talking to some of my couples on Zoom and they're like in a closet together talking to me or they're in the bathroom <laughs> locked away. It's, yeah. I mean, it's just amazing how, how cramped we all are and, and on top of each other. And that's, again, not an ideal situation to get that buildup needed to want to be more sexual. Yeah. And, you know, if you've got teenagers home, they're like on Chinese time (laughs) because they're out playing games all night long and then being able to sleep till the afternoon. And the parents are like, "Uh, when are we going to ever be alone? You know, when are the kids going to sleep so that we might have a minute of privacy and believe that we could have sex now? Which, right, the solution there is have it in the morning because your kids are still asleep. That's my thing. Well, we got to get... We definitely have to talk a little bit about creative solutions, but I also want to mention, I think the social distancing is also impacting us, Mm -hmm. right? I was on a walk with my wife and it's like, you're going down the the street and all of a sudden here comes another couple and like they cross the street because they all want to walk in your space. I mean, this, this. It almost develops this paranoid around needing totally. space and not wanting touch. Totally. Right? So if you're training your body 23 hours a day to stay away from people, to not touch, don't shake hands, don't do any of this stuff. Now all of a sudden you're supposed to let that go and, and, and throw your body towards your partner. Well, I think on the other side of that is like I get a lot of touch. You know, I mm-hmm. might, I don't know, hug my kids when I see them or my friends, my girlfriends, even my neighbors. We walk every day, or we used to walk every day together. And, you know, we often would greet with a hug. And, I mean, it sort of, like, keeps you in touch. And suddenly it's it's not there. And, it, it, yeah, it just feels weird. It's like for a person who's a hugger, this is this is depriving. I guess that you would think that would drive the person towards sex. I think what you're saying is important because crisis heads people in two directions. You're either going to reprioritize your values and maybe relationships become more important, touch becomes more important and you, you want more of it or it really starts to highlight the flaws and differences and you start driving each other nuts. So I have couples who are doing amazingly well, better than they've ever done before in this quarantine mm-hmm. and I've had a lot of couples that are really breaking down, mm-hmm. that the, the crisis is, is just magnifying their Me communication too. difficulties and you know, same with sex, those problems are going to get highlighted now. Mm-hmm. I agree. So many. So those discrepancies, right? So one person in crisis wants it more. When the other person feels more turned off, that's not a great mix. Right. And I think the withdrawer in general often is the person who needs more distance. So whoever is the more sexually withdrawn, if they're not getting that space and time, you know, sex is so intimate. It's, it's, it's so closed in, you know, so I, I think it, it doesn't feel like freedom to them. It feels like, oh, more closeness. Great. Not such a good thing. And then that turns 
that triggers the partner that wants more connection now because, hey, we're in the same house. What else is there to do? Like, this is an opportunity. This is, you know, and, and, and I'm even having less of it than normal. I mean, how does that make any sense to the pursuer? <laughs> exactly. like we have all this opportunity and yet we still can't have, we're having less sex, mm -hmm. right? And now that's going to lead to more irritation, more criticism. And here we go. The negative cycle is up and running. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, so many couples have been reporting that same thing. I, I've had couples more frequently than usual talk about maybe we're just not meant for each other, maybe we need to break up. And I, I feel like my mother used to say when my girlfriends had been over day after day and we'd get into a tiff or something and she'd say, I think you girls just need a day apart. You know, you know, there right. is something to be said for just a little bit of space. Yeah, and seeing other people. I and mean, we're all so massively isolated. I mean, it's great to talk to your friend on the phone or Zoom, but it's not the same thing as, as going somewhere together. Right. And also the energy that we have when we talk to our friends on the phone, we bring that back into the relationship, right? There's something new to talk about. And when we're not having that, it's like, okay, well, I just saw you for breakfast and now I'm seeing you for lunch. No, nothing has changed since lunch. It's now dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Don't have and anything dinner. new I mean, to tell meals you. Are, meals become so much more important, right? It's like <laughs> nonstop. You can't order out. It's just constant work. And I've what? never done so many dishes in my life. I thought I did a lot of dishes in a firehouse. Wow. Oh, I am so proud of you, George. Thank you. <laughs> for doing those But I do dishes. want to – I read this great article that talks about we're doing a lot of Zoom meetings now, right? A little uh, mm -hmm. FaceTime online platforms, and yet – I always find myself more tired afterwards. Mm. And what, what the research is saying, it's because so many of the things that we use in everyday life, like reading nonverbals, microfacial expressions, like we can't do any of those things. Mm -hmm. What we've learned to depend on what feels safe. So we're having to work that much harder, focus that much more. Right? And I think this is exactly what's happening. We're, we're doing a lot of things differently, which is making us more tired, a little bit more irritable, and our partner really doesn't understand. We're not really sure why it's happening, but it's, it's creating this really ripe climate with high levels of anxiety, high levels of frustration, high levels of criticism, which is not really optimal for great sex. Exactly. It, it is tiring. It's funny because... You and I today, I'm looking at you on Zoom, and it's just slightly off from what I hear. And yeah. so I'm I'm trying – I know my mind is trying to catch up the whole time. <laughs> now he's making faces. <laughs> you know, but it's like it's trying to sync these up, and it can't, and so it is exhausting. And I, I think that happens on my Zoom sessions normally. It's just a second behind. A second behind. What a great way to describe what's happening in so many houses across the world. A new podcast title, A Second Behind. A Second Behind. <laughs> All right. Out of sync. Okay. Make it hot while it lasts. <laughs> hey, all. Dr. Lori Watson talking about Uber Lube. We just think it's a really fantastic product. I've been giving it out for years to patients and recommending it because it's not sticky, it has a great glide, it doesn't leave a residue, and it leaves your skin feeling soft and silky, which is awesome. It is made up of three types of high-grade silicone. It's scent-free, taste-free, so you can switch from foreplay to oral sex to intercourse with no problem, and it's classy. I mean, it has beautiful packaging. It's glass. It looks in this clear bottle like something that you can be proud of on your nightstand. It's made in the USA, which I'm so grateful for because we need every job we can get right now. It is, I think, the highest quality product on the market. And I would just love for you to use this and your support at uberlube.com with the coupon foreplay helps us continue to provide content for you. So we would love for you to check it out there. Again, uberlube.com, and then you want to use the coupon foreplay. Hey, just a word to our Patreon supporters. Thank you so much. Many of you have been really faithful for a couple of years at least in supporting us, and we're really grateful for that. And we'd also like to invite others of you into our mission. We see our calling, essentially, as to help couples develop a long-lasting relationship that is both intimate and also sexually erotic, as you know. It's what we talk about every week. 
we would be grateful for you in joining us in this mission. Your support means more than you realize, and it keeps this project moving forward, and we're really hoping to reach greater heights. And our sponsors, Uberlube, have partnered with us, and they have offered to send the first 12 people who sign up on Patreon for a $10 and above level a free package of Uberlube. Find a link on foreplayradiosextherapy.com or foreplayrst.com, and we are so so thankful for your support. All right, Lori. So we're going to have to get a little bit practical here. How are we going to help these millions of couples out there not having sex or having too infrequent sex? Yeah, what? because of the stress, right? Yes. <sighs> I have noticed that the news has also said alcohol increase is been increased. So my hope is that at least they use a little of it for, <laughs> you know, letting go of the stress and let it, you know, getting into their body a bit. Well, it's, is that practical enough? That's a, a right? glass of water too, as long as it's not too many glasses, right? Yeah, not too many. Yeah. In moderation. In moderation. I'm hoping that maybe something like this can shake some of these faulty beliefs. I think a big one around sex is, you know, I want to help dispel this myth of spontaneous magical sex that just happens in the movies. And it's just like, I, I think we really need to be much more intentional about it. Great lovers are intentional. They, they set the scene, they plan it, they anticipate it, they build it. They're doing mm -hmm. so much that's leading to these successful moments. So true. Like we're going to have to help couples do that. Like this, don't think being intentional is a turn off or it means there's something wrong. I mean, you got to be more intentional now when you got the kids in the next room and you got to cook dinners. And I mean, if you're not planning this and being intentional, how's it ever going to happen? Mm -hmm. You know, one thing I thought about that would be intentional is to have couple time like every night especially when you have teenagers. I, I had a girlfriend who basically called room time at 9 p.m. All her teenagers had to be in their own rooms at 9 p.m. And I thought when you're stuck away, maybe room time for the adults. It's like, you know, mom and dad, we're done. We're done with y'all. Let's just go to bed. And then it isn't awkward. It isn't like mom and dad go into their own room just to have sex. It's like mom and dad retire and okay. they're in their own space. Whether they're having sex or not, you know, best left to the kid's imagination <laughs> or maybe not. Well, this you know, is also a time to come up with new moves, right? Create those new neural pathways mm -hmm. that maybe you do have sex typically at night, but with the kids being up in the next room, that's not so realistic. So maybe it is morning sex when they're sleeping to what, three o'clock? <laughs> what time least, are these teenagers at sleeping to? <laughs> One of my sons is out of work right now. He doesn't live at home. Thank God he lives in his own house. But, you know, he's been saying, yeah, he's on truly on Japanese time, you know, staying up. I think he had to stay up all night one night just to see if he could reset his clock. But I'm like, oh, I'm glad you're in your place, not in our place doing that. I have a couple who sets their alarm for five o'clock. To wake ooh. up and have sex. Ooh, that is that is ooh. Uh, that can can we just not like, gonna give work them for everybody. Medal? Just it's, give it's, them a medal, right? Well, what's <laughs> what's interesting is the built up is starting the day before, right? So they're going to bed a little bit earlier. Because they're getting a little bit less sleep, hope, right? But yeah. they're anticipating, you know, what's the routine at five o'clock in the morning? They got to get up and go to the bathroom first. You know, they throw mouthwash in. Like they're having these discussions <laughs> that, <laughs> and it's causing them to do things that they really didn't do before. And they're doing this because of COVID being home with children. That's right. Oh, that's awesome. That's really great. I have another couple who never took showers together. Now they're having sex in the showers because oh. that's the one place that people aren't listening. They're, you know, they get a little bit of privacy. I have yes, another couple that nice. goes to the garage, right? They haven't had sex in 25 years in the car, but now they're having sex in the car again. So there is a, there is some fun opportunities in this if we can get creative. 
I suggested that to somebody that they take a short drive and and do it in the car and they looked at me or they on Zoom they looked at me like I'd lost my mind. I'm like, "Well, there's no one on the roads, but not that we want to <laughs> encourage exhibitionism, right?" I have a police officer friend. I might be good to ask. Do they see the rates of sex people in cars really increasing during Are this time? Are they just turning a blind eye right now? Come yeah. on. Come on, guys. <laughs> just imagine they're getting away from their teenagers. Yeah, that's that's good. I like all those. You had all the good ideas. Well, somebody told me they, they're focusing more on outer cause than intercourse. Yeah. Right, the things that are happen outside of intercourse uh-huh. that's they're just that's this, sex over your clothes. Do you know that? Is that what it is? That is what it is. Yeah, that's it's like the technical this, definition. Yes. <laughs> Outer course is having like you know, like in high school when you were trying not to do it, or if maybe you didn't try not to do it when you were in high school, but basically <laughs> everything, you know, you, you're not allowed to touch each other naked. It's out of course. So you it's recommend that as course. something else too, a little bit more out of course for our couples? Fun, yes. During the day when they catch each other in the hallways, right? Just starting well, the I, foreplay outside, yeah. I guess what it's forcing us to do is, I mean, we focus so much on high levels of interest and engagement necessary for really great sex. Mm-hmm. But what I'm starting to see is the importance of adding high levels of intent also to great sex. Mm -hmm. So it's not just the interest, but the intent is critically important. Like, how do I prioritize this? And there's an, uh, I think there's an arousal that can happen as you're planning it out. You can say, oh, this isn't spontaneous and this is just not working so well. Or you can say, wait a second, this is... In the shower could be pretty cool. How do I kind of set that up? You know, do I shave my legs, legs beforehand? Do I do this? I mean, that that building up is is I think really really helpful during these times. Mm-hmm. Yeah, music, music, loud music in the parents' room, frequently every night. <laughs> is that every <laughs> night so they don't know the That's nights that right, it's happening? That's right, so they don't not? know. Or you're just having sex every night. I wasn't sure what that meant. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> yeah. No, well, this is good. a chance, too, to introduce more novelty into the relationship because you are stuck together in this house, you know, so maybe you do get yourself a new toy or, you know, masturbation becomes more important or you try a different move or a different position. I think introducing some change into the routine, the whole world's changing. So we might as well embrace it during this time. Mm -hmm. Let's not look for the same old sex before COVID-19. We're redefining how we're Mm going to do sex and add these new moves into our repertoire. Mm -hmm. At least Amazon is still delivering, right? (laughs) <laughs> New toys, flavored lubricants, whatever they want. That's, well, we're going to do a show idea. on that, on all these new toys and things that Lori knows a lot about. <laughs> yes, exactly. We'll have to do that. Have a sponsor for sure. <laughs> okay. And would you also agree that if talk is foreplay, right, how couples, this also gives couples much Four more letter of a word chance. Four-letter word ends in K. There you go. <laughs> I think this is such a golden opportunity for couples to work on their sexual communication. I do too. They literally have a lot more hours together than they've ever had before. Let's not avoid these conversations. Let's just Mm -hmm. try to face some of these difficult conversations. Mm -hmm. You know, what does turn me on? What does turn me off? Can we talk about those because we have time now where we didn't before? Yeah. What books would you recommend? I know you're reading this one by Klein Patz. To all our listeners, Lori has sent me at least 15 books on sex. So I have enough reading for, for a while here. I know. Well, you said, really, you said to send you one. And so you did. as a pursuer, You just added right? a zero to that one, just like a good pursuer. You <laughs> just, just like a pursuer. That's right. Send I'm really you a thousand enjoying, books. I'm really enjoying Peggy Kleinplatz's book on magnificent sex. And mm-hmm. it just, it, to me, it's fascinating that P- 
people all over the world, regardless of their sexual orientation or their beliefs or if they have a disability or if they're young or if they're old, they're all describing really the same kind of things. Mm -hmm. And it'd be great to have an episode on that and just go into more detail. But just I'm seeing the opportunity. I'm hoping during a crisis like this, we talk about post-traumatic growth, right? People see the opportunity to become different, to make meaning out of an event like this. Think how lucky some couples can be if this forces them to be more intentional about their lovemaking, to be better communicators, to really understand more of what they need or what their partner needs, to see the opportunity to transcend and to grow. I mean, this is really a great chance for so many, so many people out there to take sex to the next level. Yeah, especially those who have been strapped for time. Their, their life is so busy. Suddenly they've slowed down and they have that minute. I, I would say this is the one blessing I have found in COVID. My life is so fast and I'm always running here and there and, and don't seem to ever have enough time. And this has been a blessing to just be at home. It's been wonderful. That part of it has been wonderful. So, yeah, for everybody who always says they are too busy for sex, now it's time to work on it. It's time to get there. Amen to that. Okay. And for those couples that this is hard, that makes sense. I mean, the mm -hmm. distance to keeping busy has has probably led to not having these conversations. Mm -hmm. So to turn around and start facing it and having these difficult conversations – you know, it, it can be quite challenging. Mm -hmm. But the good news is that deep down, your heart has always wanted to have more of these conversations. It's just trying to give it the space. And I couldn't agree with you more. I think COVID-19, the blessing in some of this is that there is things are slowing down and there is actually more space to start talking about the things that actually are the most important. Yeah. Thanks for listening for Play Radio. Keep it hot. For those of you who are listening today, we are also going to send out some free Uber Lube to those of you who sponsor us on our Patreon page. Find a link on foreplayradiosextherapy.com or foreplayrst.com. And we are so thankful for your support. And Foreplay family, I want you to know we had our highest download day ever, thanks to you. Our downloads are just increasing by leaps and bounds. We are so grateful for your sharing. Thank you again. Definitely subscribe. That helps our rankings in iTunes, which is important for us. Call in your questions to the 4Play question voicemail. Dial 833-MY4PLAY. That's 833, the number 4, play. And we'll use the questions for our mailbag episodes. All content is for entertainment purposes only and should not be considered as a substitute for therapy by a licensed clinician or as medical advice from a doctor.